Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. How y'all guys doing today? Yes, it's your girl Julia back with another one. This video was requested um, by a viewer, so shout out to you. Okay, um, I spoke about this topic many, 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 many times. Um, as y'all know, I used to, well, I made a video talking about Marcus Garvey and um, the whole Back to Africa movement. Hey, girl, hey. So y'all can definitely um, check that out. It's on my channel. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> you're, you're, when you see the video, you're going to be like, oh, my God, you're on the bed. I was very passionate back then, but what i said in the video was truthful and um i think i had like sources in the description too. hopefully i did not but anywho um you can also find them by doing your own research too so um yeah i guess i just dive right into this video i guess i just talk about the whole back to africa movement how it impacted our people and just kind of give y'all the rundown okay so um, I was like, well, let me see if I can find um, any recent information about the Back to Africa um, movement. And the first thing that pops up is Marcus Garvey. Um, for those who don't know, Marcus Garvey, he was a Pan-Africanist. Um, he would urge um, our people to... Um, you know, move to Africa and 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 claim that we're not needed or wanted here in America. And he also was saying how um, the American Negro claiming Native American is a coward. And I know this because I, I don't know I don't know if y'all know, but um, y'all heard of this guy named Brother Hansan or something. Me and him got like we got into a whole meme war, like like years ago, y'all. And um, so he called himself like trying to like call me out, and he made a meme, and he was like, "Marcus Garvey told us about these um Negroes that be claiming Native American," and lo and behold, um, right. Out of Marcus Garvey uh, speech, he was really talking mess about our people, um, you know, being in, uh, indigenous and stuff. So, Marcus Garvey is buried in Jamaica. His homeland was Jamaica. He never himself relocated to Africa. Yeah, never did. You know, and the rabbit hole gets so much deeper. So I'm trying. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get us to that point. Okay, I'm gonna get it to that point. All right, so um, just to give y'all a background, um, yes, uh, Marcus Mosea Garvey Sr. Um, he was a Jamaican political activist, publisher, journalist, entrepreneur, and orator. Um, oh, it says that he was the founder and first president general of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. The, through which he declared himself a provisional president of Africa. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, like, really maintain, like, what I have to say because it's, like, it's one thing to, like, you know, say that you're African, but, like, to really talk mess about our people for claiming to be indigenous and then trying to get us removed off our homeland, and which obviously didn't work. And then um, it didn't, you know, Marcus Garvey went to jail for mail fraud and so on and so forth. But let me tell y'all, okay, because a, a few years back, I came across um, this article right i'm gonna screen share with y'all let's see 
Y'all, I don't know how to work this thing. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Okay, I did it. I found it. I found out what to do. Let's see. Is this it? Oh, okay, I did it. Okay. Can y'all see? Y'all can see it? Hey, cousin. Hey cousin, what's up? We over here talking about Marcus Garvey, y'all. Okay, so I know y'all have probably heard, right? Well, Yona, I've been hearing uh, Marcus Garvey work with the KKK. Yeah, he did. I'm gonna read y'all this. All right, this is from the Encyclopedia of Virginia .org, Okay, Ernest Pops was a committed white supremacist who advocated on behalf of anti-miscegenation laws. I think I pronounced that right. We're just going to pretend I did it, if I did it, all right? And in 1922, co-founded with the composer John Paul in Anglo-Saxon Clubs of America, a Richmond-based nationwide organization devoted to maintaining a strict separation of the races, all right? In 1923, Cox published White America, a book that described his travels in Africa and argues that race mixing would result in the collapse of white civilization. Okay, boom, y'all. There is a video of this hell woman claiming that she don't want white children and that she wants her race to live longer. I was like, what? Girl, what? So, this is what so-called white supremacy, or what I like to call white inferiority, is scared of. Because they try bleaching us out, and they wind up bleaching, well, I should say darkening their own selves. Because there's no guarantee that the offspring will choose either one of the races that they come from. You know what I'm saying? They could choose someone totally different. All right, but anywho, he also wrote extensively on eugenics, a now discredited scientific movement aimed at proving the superiority of the white race. Together with composer Powell and Virginia State Register, Walter Pecker. All right, everybody remember who Walter Pecker is? You know, all right, let's, 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 let's talk about Walter Plucker real quick. Walter Plucker was a physician in the first Virginia State Restaurant of Vital Statistics, a position he served in from 1912 to four, 1946. He was a staunch promoter of eugenics, a described movement aimed at scientifically proving right racial superiority, therefore, thereby justifying the marginalizing of non-white people. Employing Virginia Acts to Preserve Racial Integrity, 1924, Plector effectively separated Virginia citizens into two simplified racial categories, white and color. The law which remained in effect until 1967, when it was overturned by the United States Supreme Court in the case of Loving versus Virginia. Who's Loving versus Virginia? Y'all remember her? Let's not forget, she is Indian. This woman is Indian. Mildred Loving is Indian. On her birth certificate, it says Indian. But when they talk about her, they say what she is, Black or African. No. Now they talking about she was part African American and part Indian. No, because on her birth certificate it says Indian, 
and they know it, but this is what they do. As a matter of fact, let me let me show let me let me put up her birth certificate because I know y'all probably like Yona, you showing us, but I don't. You, you, we don't what? I hold on. I'm gonna show y'all. This one right here. Is this it? Let me see. Oh, that's the marriage certificate. I know I seen it. Hold on. Is this it? Yep, there it is, right here. Hey, why is it blue? What's this? Can you see it then? Okay, there we go. Oh, look, even the grand, even the grandson, y'all. He came out November 4th, 2016. Brother had to come out and say, hold on now, hold on. In here, right there. She said, I am not black. I have no black ancestry. I am Indian Ramana. I told the people so when they came to arrest me. They know what they're doing. Yeah, but I feel like I gotta be on a mission because I know I've seen that birth certificate. And I know it's say I know it's said. But we we seen we seen that license now. I know I done seen it. I seen it somewhere. Cause now I feel like hold on. Oh, they had her mark other. Mm, interesting. Let's see. What's this say? Oh, what is it? Oh, this is the marriage certificate. Damn, she even wrote it on there. She was not playing with nobody. She said, I'm Rampanock Indian. Do not play with me. Maybe they took it down. Oh, well. But I know I've seen it. But let's go back. God, it went down a whole rabbit hole. But that's just to show y'all the background and everything. Because I know there's people on this channel that are new. Welcome. And they like, well, I don't, well I'm kind of new to this, okay? That's why I take my time when I share information. All right? Okay, now back to Walter, Walter Plecker. All right? Required that a racial description of every person be recorded at birth while criminalizing marriages between whites and non-whites. Fleckers policies use deceptive scientific quote quote evidence to deem so-called black people lesser class of people. But they also targeted uh, the poor whites and anyone he or other eugenics considered um, feeble-minded. Okay, asserting that Virginia Indians were in fact mixed blooded Negroes. Plecker also pressured state agencies into reclassifying, reclassifying Indians as colored. Okay, y'all thought we was just playing. We're not playing about this. 
Y'all think we lying? No one's not lying about this, y'all. Like, this is... These are facts. This is the truth. Our people are still going through this to this day. All right? The policy's legacy was effectively to erase Indian and as an identity and has made it difficult for Virginia Indians to gain state and federal recognition. Of course, they know what they're doing about this because we're seeing more and more of the pale people being adopted into these tribes, and more and more of us being drafted out to the side. But this is something that has been happening for centuries now. All right, so since we now know who Walter Plecker is and the damage he has done, we're going to get back to Cox here. Cox played an influential role in lobbying, lobbying the Virginia General Assembly to pass the Racial Integrity Act of 1924, a strict anti miscegenation law, and later the Massenburg Bill, which banned racial mixing in all public places. Yeah, okay. When, okay. It's not like people couldn't do it behind closed doors. I know this sounds stupid because obviously it's happening behind closed doors. If you come across mixed people, like, I don't know, this is just dumb. Come on, you can't do it in public. Well, no one's not gonna do it in public. I mean, unless they freaky like that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I guess, in other words, just don't show affection to each other if y'all have different races. Anywho, and here gets to the good part right here. In 1924, Cox formed an unlikely alliance with the black nationalist Marcus Garvey based on their shared belief that the only way to save the races was for African Americans to relocate to Africa. Cox retired from the real estate business in 1958 and died in Richmond in 1966. Interesting. Hmm. Both two people, one not identifying as our people, and the other one definitely who are not our people, teaming up together to remove us off our land. Ain't that something? You know, I had a lot of people come at me like, oh, well, you just can't talk much about Marcus Garvey. You can't take something away from us and not give us anything. I'm like, I'm giving you the truth. This is the truth. Like, for one, for me, in what, 2016, I started learning that I'm not African. And that the things that I learned about Africa are just untrue. What they said about um, my origins are untrue. So it's like all my life, people have been lying to me. And then to turn around and hear that these people are heroes. Because what? They wanted to keep a race pure? Or or they felt like we didn't have any footing here so we should just leave? No. We're not going to leave our home just because it's an infestation. Like, this is our home. So, I mean, like, some people look to Marcus Garvey as, you know, the hero, but to me, I just can't. Like, I'm not looking at anybody that feels like there's beef because I am who I am. Because, first of all, 
out of all people, you're going to form an alliance with someone who obviously hates our people. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it'd be one thing if, like, the pale supremacist is like, oh, well, you know, we're just going to give y'all, y'all peace on America, and this is what it is, and we're just going to leave each other alone, and they made an alliance that was like that. Okay, I'll be like, all right, you know, to see if you're going to stick to that. But no, y'all just want to team up together to completely remove us off our land that we worked so hard for. And that we've been on for millions of years, not no hundreds of thousands, millions, baby, millions. Okay. Like what what do you what do you think this is? Okay. Let me see what y'all saying. So, okay, I'm going to show y'all this next. I'm going to show y'all another um, thing here in a second. All right, here's another one. Okay. So I'm going to read this whole paragraph to you, okay? Well, a little bit. Okay. Okay, so Europeans did have um, interest in Plecker's work, but European countries didn't have um, many problems with uh, miscegenation. So they showed interest more in the law of biological benefits and less for the model um, miscegenation law. Okay, Laughlin. Also, Suggested Plecker context statements instant uh, for, I don't know how to say that, but we're going to say Sweden, with samples of publications from the Bureau. A few of Plecker's ideas for advertising the law outside of Virginia may strike some as odd and unorthodox. To promote the law, Plecker went as far as commissioning a film on the issue. Plecker had begun contacting a sales manager for the nation National Motion Pictures Company, located in Indianapolis, to receive copies of two films, but also to begin discussions on creating a film on racial integrity in collaboration with a local Richmond filmmaker. Oh, snap. Sorry. Oh, no, where did it go? Okay, here we go. Yes, although the film was never created, Plecker's interest shows the lens he would go to encourage racial integrity. Plecker even wrote U.S. President Calvin, Calvin Coolidge an appeal for the pardon of Marcus Garvey. Plecker wrote to the U.S. President Calvin Coolidge asking him to pardon Marcus Garvey for his mail fraud charge. Okay. One of Garvey's chief aim, aims is to inspire his people with the desire to preserve their racial purity and to teach the appearance of mongrelization as it is progressing in the South in spite of restrictions as to its marriage and in other sections at a rapid rate because of the lack of such restrictions. In the case of the film and his plea for the release of Marcus Garvey, 
Flecker sought to promote the law in more creative ways rather than just petitioning interested parties as was usually done. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy, y'all. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I'm taken aback just by any y'all. I was like, oh, dang, they must have been like, cool, cool. Okay, I didn't know Marcus Garvey and um, and Walter Pecker was getting along like that. Could y'all team up with a health supremacist? Be cool on the other side of the pillow. <laughs> I can't see it. I don't know. I don't know about y'all. I'm not with it. I don't like it. Oh. So Powell said, this is what he said about Marcus Garvey right here. All right, I'm going to show y'all. Yeah, right here. This is, this is okay. I Powell told him Marcus Garvey that in his appeal to the soul of white America, he had profoundly touched and moved at least one white American. In return, he assured me that he and the UNIA were unalterably opposed to racial amalgamation. It has been charged that I have involved Marcus Garvey in an attack on Hampton Institute. This charge is false. In a letter I wrote him, which was carried by the Richmond Papers, I stated that Garvey and the UNIA would approve all efforts towards the preservation of racial integrity. Garvey's name was mentioned in no other connection. I trust it. This letter has made two points clear. First, that Marcus Garvey has been guilty of no betrayal of his race or his cause. Second, that there are enrichment, and I believe throughout the South, many sincere white friends of the Negro race who resent the injustice done to Marcus Garvey and who wish him Godspeed in his great work to build for his people and nation in a culture of its own. Mm -mm -mm. I ain't feeling that. Are y'all feeling that? So a white supremacist. wish him Godspeed and his great work to build for his people and nation and culture of his own. Y'all, I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling this at all, y'all. Okay. All right. Barbie's letter, while more inflammatory, echoed Powell's sentiments. Moreover, Garvey's response illustrates his discontent with his lack of control over the Negro world and his desire to maintain authority within the UNIA and its publications. <laughs> All right, let's see what you say, y'all. I am surprised at the editorial in the Negro world of today's day under caption of Marcus Garvey and 
white American society in which I am mentioned as making statements in regard to mess messers. I didn't that's how I'm gonna say it today. That's how I'm gonna say it today, messers. Cox and Powell of Richmond VA and their res, uh, respective societies. I know nothing of the spirit of the editorial, which I regard as mischievous. I repudiate the attack upon these two friends who have given no cause to be thus insulted. I further object to my name being used in editorial of that nature attacking an organization of persons without my knowledge and approval. You will please reproduce this in entirely entirety. The policy of the organization has been defined by me more than a thousand times, and there has been absolutely no change on my part. Barry's cooperation in public support of John Powell and E.S. Cox can be understood only through an examination of Garvey's background, as well as the similarities and differences between Garvey's Black sep separatism and the Virginia eugenics, eugenics white supremacy. Gar Garvey and Virginia uh, eugenicists desired national recognition, practical success, and the ability to control private choices regarding sex and marriage when they involved issues of race. At the center of all of their goals was their complete devotion to what they believed was the betterment of, the, of their uh, respective races. These similarities allowed them, as Tony Martin has noted, to form not an all-embracing alliance, but instead a practical working relationship. By the early 1920s, Marcus Garvey has entered the climax and the start of the decline in his leadership of one of the most controversial African-American movements. Having established the UNIA, Garvey began raising funds and purchasing ships for the Black Star Line, which he hoped eventually provide the transportation for his Back to Africa movement. Garvey actions in separate ideology created a chasm with other African-American activist groups, particularly the uh, NAACP. Garvey and W.E.B. Du Bois espoused radically different strategies for African-American communities in the 1920s. Mia Bay has explained the differences and tactics of the two men as a factor of competing traditions in Black thought. According to Bay, Black intellectuals did not share Garvey's Messianic Black nationalism and instead turned to liberal environmentalism to combat increasing scientific racism within the social sciences, as we should. Du Bois and other Black intellectuals liberation, uh, liberal intermoral, oh my goodness, I cannot speak today, I'm so sorry, y'all, directly challenged both Garvey's and um, Eugenist conviction on pro the primary of biological race. Um, the liberal emphasized the importance of the environment rather than biological factors in determining human capacity. In other words, these black intellectuals concentrated on improving environmental conditions rather than promoting a race as inherently superior or inferior. I agree. Garvey had other critics outside the NAACP, Tony Martin. Uh, posited that the United States was against them because they considered all black radicals subversive. European governments were against him because he was a threat to stability of their colonies. The communists were against him because he successfully kept black workers out of their grasp. Among all this um, distinction, Garvey declared friendships with the with both ASCOA and the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> Declare friendships with the Ku Klux Klan. Y'all read it here first. Y'all read it here first. Y'all already got the source. It's like right here. You type that in right there. As a matter of fact, I'll post it for you. Come. <laughs> 
So yes, Marcus Garvey worked with the Ku Klux Klan. Okay, he worked with the KKK. So all you pan Africanists, y'all can stop coming for me. All right, don't be coming for me, cause your whole leader was bobbing with the KKK. All right, don't come for me. All right. Even before his association with the ASCOA, African American community leaders had already criticized Garvey regarding his relationship with other white supremacists. Previously, they had been criticized Garvey for attending a meeting with one of the Ku Klux Klan members. What well, leaders? Oh, leaders! Edward Clark. Oh my God. Edward Clark. Oh Lord. Garvey engineered the meeting to win to win over Southern supporters and to discuss their similar views on Jim Crow laws, which both Garvey and Clark favored. Garvey's anti-integrationist um, stance contributed to the animosity with Du Bois. Both Garvey and Clark would face great criticism for the meeting from the members of their separate organizations. And as a result, the association between the two would end. Clark uh, was expelled from the Klan while the NAACP attacked Garvey. A Philip Randolph and Chandler uh, Owen named him a race baiter and race traitor. Garvey's interactions with Powell and ASCOA would be more successful for all concerned, yet still resulted in negative publicity, such as the Negro Road um, editorial. Nevertheless, Garvey maintained a friendly and reciprocal relationship with Powell and the ASCOA. No, okay. I know more, I know more here judging, and I live right too, okay? Anywho, but still. If I could have like understood more, if like, if like Garvey was like cool with them, only like to learn their secrets and then attack them, you know, like, because at the end of the day, the KKK is still the enemy. They look at us as the enemy, and that's the whole reason why they even kicked out their own. Because they're like, nah, you you a little too much. You you doing a little too much with this Garvey character. That's why, that's why both sides are looking out weird. Like, you doing too much, bro. You doing too much. And they are doing too much. But I think it's crazy how neither one betrayed the other, even after both of their organizations kicked them out. What does that say, y'all? What does that say? Now, and now, and, and y'all wonder why we say this man is an agent. Y'all wonder why we say, oh, you know, this dude is an agent, y'all. Yeah, I remember, like, one dude I, I knew for a while. He was like, man, I remember you, you was talking about Marcus Garvey, and I was so upset. I was like, I don't care. I'm like, I understand, but I just, I don't care. We've been saying this for a long time. But yeah, they, they don't care. You saw it was right. But I just think that's odd, y'all. I just think that's weird. That even after they both were shown, they was like, hey, what's up? We still cool. That's, and that's why people think that Marcus Garvey was, um, was an agent. I know I do. Because I'm like, nah, you ain't going to be sitting here talking about you for our people. And you laid up with a clan member. And it was one thing that you like, yeah, I got my plan to get over on them. You know, because at the end of the day, this is still a clan member. You know they out there missing what our people. That's just, it, it just, it's just, it blows my mind. Blows my mind. It blows my mind how people will 
ignore things, you know, just because it's not what they want it to be. It's crazy. It's it's just crazy. You know, and I understand that our leaders are not perfect. And I understand that, you know, people make mistakes and all other stuff. But it just ain't no way that I'm a team up with a clan member and not think of some way of getting over on their ass. Like, it just ain't no way, especially knowing the things that they have done to our people or what they plan on doing to our people. Like, it just, it just ain't no way. Like, and that's, and that's where he got me messed up. I'm like, bro, you could at least, you know, on a trip to New York, Poel gave a speech to you to the UNIA on racial purity. To ensure his acceptance, Garvey pen, penned a letter of introduction for Powell by Marcus Garvey, which highlighted Garvey's appraisal of Powell and ASCOA. Oh, I know this ain't it. I know he did. What? A letter of it. Okay. So this is what Garvey had to say about Mr. Powell's speech. Yeah. The the first paragraph right here got me messed up right here. Members of Anglo Saxon clubs are honest and honorable in their desire to purify and preserve the white race even as we are determined to purify and standardize our own. Honest and honorable. Members of the Anglo-Saxon Club are honest and honorable in their desire. Mm -mm. We, the two organizations, should work together for the purpose of bringing about the ideals, thought, the purification of other races, their autonomous separation and unbridled freedom of self-development and self-expression. Those who are against this are enemies of both races and rebels against morality, nature, and God. I unhesitantly endorse the race parity idea of Mr. Powell and his organization. I have pledged my moral support to their program in that direction. In the honorable and honest of his race, the same regard and support for. Okay, Garvey. All right. Garvey's sentiments were reciprocated in Powell's speech, which greatly praised Garvey's leadership, calling Garvey the great leader who has sought to do for his race what the greatest of white Americans sought to do for that race and to encourage that race to do for itself none other than Abraham Lincoln. Powell pledged the support of the white people in the south of this country who realize Garvey's importance. Now, I don't know about y'all, but it sounds like they booty warriors. It sounds like they are booty warriors. They booty warring it up. <laughs> y'all, um, let me tell y'all something. Because one thing I feel like people are forgetting here is that why is why is this bad? It's crazy how these these people work. Okay, oh here, here here goes another one. All right, we're going uh, talk about uh, another one. All right, now I'm going to switch on over to uh, what's his name? Walter Plecker. Okay. All right. This young Monacan mother, Indian mother, delivered her son at Lynchburg General Hospital in 1971. 
part of her Indian heritage, a woman was dismayed when hospital f- officials designated him as black for his birth certificate. They threatened to bar his discharge unless she, um, I guess she let it go. The original orders came from Richmond generations ago. Virginia's former longtime registrar of the Bureau of Vital Statistics, Dr. Walter Ashley Plecker, believed there is no real native born Indians in Virginia, that anybody claiming to be Indian had a mix of black blood. In aggressively policing, Policing the color line, he classified it pseudo Indians as black and even issued the 1943 hit list of surnames belonging to mongrel or mixed blood families suspected of having Negro ancestry who must not be allowed to pass as Indian or white. Y'all, hateful language. Like rats, when you are not watching, they have been sneaking in their birth certificates through their own midwives, either giving either Indian or white racial uh, racial classification. Pleckerable. Twenty years later, the Monica mother's surname still on Plecker's lips. She argued force forcefully with hospital officials. She lost. Today, the woman's eyes reveal her lingering pain. She consulted with civil rights lawyers and eventually won a correction on her son's birth certificate. Good for her. But see, now if she was the Indian, she wouldn't be granted. She wouldn't be granted that, right? People always want to dismiss our heritage until we can back it up. People always want to dismiss our heritage. And we'll be like, oh, well, you're classified as as, as African American. That means you're African American. No, it means that I am a victim of paper genocide. You know, on my um, I attempted to enroll in Choctaw Nation video. I had so many natives, I, and a lot of white people too. That was coming. Oh well, um, I don't get it. Are are you African? Are you Indian? I'm not getting. You're saying you're African. I said that me and other Indians have been reclassified as black, Negro, colored. Just because our documents may say we are African-American does not mean that that's who we are. The paper genocide goes very deeply, okay? And it, and it started when they called us Indian. Then we saw how they put us into two categories with the with the natives and with us. And of course we're being laid as freemen. But they don't get a label other than Indian attached to them. This lady said, I don't think the prejudice will ever stop, said the woman, who agreed to talk to a reporter only on condition of um, being anonymous. She waged a personal battle in modern times against the bitter legacy of Plecker, who ran the barrel from 1912 to 1946, a racial supremacist. Plecker and his influential allies helped shape one of the darkest chapters of Virginia's history. A physician born just before the Civil War, Plecker embraced that now discredited eugenics movement as a scientific rationale for preserving Caucasian racial purity. He saw only two races, Caucasian and non-Caucasian, and opposed their out uh, a migration. A migration? Yeah, they talk about that. So these are the people that Marcus is teaming up with, people that are trying to constantly erase our identity. And then here Marcus tell my son, oh, well, you niggas know you ain't Indian. You need to come to Africa. That's why our people were not fucking with him. You gonna fuck with Plecker? You gonna fuck with Cox? The people that are constantly like trying to write us out of history, that's who you gonna look up to? That's who you gonna fuck with? 
No, I can't fuck with that. Them that them was working hand in hand together. And that's why they was probably getting along so good. Because they was like, as long as you get them Negroes off this land, we are good. I don't care where you take it. Just send them anywhere. We are trying to further colonize them and take their land. There is no Indians. They just mix with, with, with black. They mix with Negro. So therefore, they need to get gone. So we can further colonize this land and take what's not ours. Plecker threatened a Fisherville's woman with a uh, prosecution in 1944 for a birth record he contended hit her Negro lineage. After the war, it was possible that some of these cases will come into court. We might try this one. It would make a good one if you continue to try to be what you are not, Plecker warned. His writing supports the view of leading scholars that Indians were secondary and not primary target of the eugenics movement in Virginia. The attack of persons of African descent laid the foundation for the attack against the American Indian community in Virginia as a mixed race population, where the anthropologist Dr. Daniel Moretti of the College of William and Mary in a dissertation uh, on the political resurgence of Virginia's Indians. Two races as materially divergent as the white and the Negro in morals, mental powers, and cultural fitness cannot live in close contact without injury to the higher, he told him American Public Health Association session in 1924. The lawyer never has been and never can be raised to the level of a higher. Piper went on, we are now engaged in a struggle more titanic and of far greater importance than that the power that the central powers from which we have recently emerged, he added, meaning scar uh, scarcely know that the struggle, which means life or death of our civilization, is now in progress. And giving it, he concluded, let us turn a deaf ear to those who would interpret Christian brotherhood to mean racial equality. You just cannot make this up. You just cannot make this up, y'all. They know what they are doing by constantly promoting the Back to Africa movement to our people. This movement should have actually died when Marcus Garvey died. Honestly. And that's just being honest. Okay. I'm saying the American entrepreneur leading the Back to Africa movement. Mm. Rashad McCrory. What do he look like? So I, I want. I need to see what he looked like before I form an opinion. Because supposedly there's a entrepreneur trying to get our people moving out there.
as soon as it show it to me. Okay, here we go. Oh. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Let me let me okay. Let me let me post it where y'all see it. This is the guy. This up in the article, okay. Rashad McCrory is an American entrepreneur and writer. In October 2016, McCrory's, uh, I'm just gonna call him Rashad, y'all. I can't tell you his last name. Started Africa Cross Culture, a back to Africa travel company organizing trips to Egypt, Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria, and Rwanda. Rashad has been in the West Africa West African country of Ghana since February 27, 2020, due to the pandemic. All right, so this dude is helping our people get over there. Oh, look at this. Before you apply for dual citizenship in Ghana, watch this for African Americans. I don't know about y'all, but he don't he don't really look like us. I mean, I'm saying his like phenotype does not is not up here. What y'all think? Y'all think he look African or American? I don't. I don't really think he, he's one of us, y'all. Obviously. Okay, so this person is leading this little movement, but. But this can all be traced back to that damn DNA session test people keep trying to push on us to do. Oh, look at this. Why the Back to Africa movement fell three times and what Ghana's 2019 year of return can learn from it. Ooh, let's read this, y'all. Let's look at these. As soon as my computer stopped freezing up on me. So anytime when I do a video like this, I'll just start, I mean, I'll just start getting a headache and I have to start running my eyes because this is what this is what we have our people stuck. People create movements that are not for us to begin with. And trying to pin this on us. Oh, look at this. After the abolishment of the slave trade in the 1770s, y'all. The Back to Africa movement emerged to encourage African Americans to return to the continent, but the movement failed to achieve its objectives as the call to return to Africa to achieve little success. So, y'all, they've been trying a long, a long time to get us over there to colonize. And this is what they're doing. They're having the Africans moving over here and have us moving over there. Because one thing, I'm like, why are everybody telling us to move over there and Africans, they trying to move out of Africa? And then Africans try to come to me to them, oh, no, no, they ain't like that. Okay, well, why are you in America then? Why you ain't staying in your home country? Shoot. Hell, I'm just making a simple observation. They talking about how people getting on little uh, uh, rafts and, and trying to leave. They look where we ain't fit it up. Okay. To 
to encourage the return of blacks with African heritage to return home. The movement persists to contemporary times, albeit the enthusiasm is low. The first Back to Africa movement was spearheaded by Paul Cuff. He was a mixed race Quaker. Oh my God. A successful former slave and businessman in post colonial Massachusetts who helped return settlers to Sierra Leone in 1815. The Quakers were the first society of friends in the American colonies to denounce slavery. Mm -hmm. The British in 1787 established a settlement for poor English black people in Sierra Leone called the Pro Province of Freedom. It later became British Crown Colony in 1808. Cup hoped to establish a prosperous colony in Africa. He wanted to send ships to Sierra Leone with African-American immigrants who would produce exports to the United States every year. He launched two expeditions in 18. 11 and 1812 to Sierra Leone. First, he sent a ship with an all black crew to Sierra Leone, which he formed a trading society for the colonists called the Friendly Society of Sierra Leone. Then, in 1812, he went to Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York to recruit members in support from the free black community for his African institution to pr promote immigration. His dream of Back to Africa crushed after faces of financial difficulties. Also, the African uh, American community stated, started to question the Back to Africa movement. To them, it was an attempt by slaveholders to get rid of them from the US. As the whites saw the rising black population as a threat, hmm. ah, I love our ancestors. I love our ancestors. They was not dumb. And especially at that time, too, they knew who they was. They knew about their heritage. No, they be like, nah, Playboy, you need gone somewhere. We, we Indian, man. Oh, I love our people. I love us. I love us so much, y'all. That just showed me that our people were really hip to the game, that people were trying to throw on us, acting like we didn't know. Oh, no, no, no. We know. We know. All right. Eventually, Cuff's work was eclipsed by the uh, American Colonization Society, which resettled slaves to Liberia, West Africa. ACS was founded in 1816 by Robert Finley of New Jersey to send free African Americans to Africa as alternative, em as alternative emancipation in the United States. ACS soon ran into challenges in its mission of relocating Blacks to Africa failed. Scholars have debated the ACS motives. While some generally believe the group wanted to abolish slavery and resettle blacks, others believe the move was to deal with the out with the growing number of blacks in the upper south. Hmm. There again, and here we are saying the same thing. We're saying the same thing. Our ancestors were saying back in the day. We have been saying the same thing. Oh, you're trying to take us off our land. You must think we stupid. That would probably work if you was actually of African descent. I'm just going to take this off. Y'all, so this is what they do. This is what they do. They are aware of what they do. This is how they get away with what they do. Okay? Now, some people may genuinely want to move to, you know, to Africa because they found that they had, um, African ancestry and so on and so forth. And I mean, that's fine. That's cool. If it works for you. If that's who you actually are. 
But the problem is they were trying to relocate us to a place that we know nothing about. We know we are not from. And they're only trying to move us because our enemy won't us gone. Especially back then too, we were successful. We was getting our land. They was um uh you know some of us was getting our uh reparations, restitutions, our 40 acres in the meal. And obviously now everybody was doing bad because they said that dude, the uh the uh Luffy guy, that his name Luffy. Cuffy, I'm sorry, yeah, his name Cuff. That's all. So Cuff wasn't um he wasn't doing bad. He even though uh he was a former slave, he was a successful businessman. So obviously not everybody was doing bad during those times, like they claimed that we were doing. But see, that's what they do. They love attaching slavery to our image. And saying, this is all who you are. And you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for us. And that's why I say you have to. You have to research your genealogy. You have to know thyself. Or otherwise, you're not going to begin playing. Because guess what? Africa needs a lot of help. Even though Africans like to play like, oh, you know, we don't need you black Americans. Yes, you do. Y'all, they needed so many nurses over there in Africa. They over here trying to sell us a dream saying, oh, yes, this is great, it's great, it's great, while they leave it. It was so great. Why are you leaving? They said they trying to get us to leave our home. But want us to. They want us to leave. So they can grab what is ours. That's not, it, it just can't work like that. I mean, I'm not with it. So y'all really think about why they are trying to push our people to move to Africa so bad. Because if these places are so great, why they ain't moved? Why they want us desperately, des desperately to be in these places? Saying, oh, you'll be more comfortable here. No. Because first of all, you're going to be in a whole new country, a whole new place. They ain't going to be comfortable for a minute. So really think about those things. Really think about... Um, When people try to push us to move somewhere we don't know nothing about. Think about it. Really think about these things. Think about how valuable we are to hear.
think about how our footprint touches people and and how we make things better okay because everybody wants to talk mess about our people but let's not forget we are responsible for most of the world inventions y'all of course they don't want us to uh, move around and 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 do what they tell us to do and marcus garvey was nothing more than a mere pawn now i know that's hearts and feelings i know people are gonna be mad but it's the truth because if it was if it was actually true of us being of African descent, of being African origin, without a doubt, a lot of us will probably be in Africa right now. Why? Because first of all, we have memory, we would have proof, and we would know. But our memory is up here because that's who we are. We are from here. But they push in like, oh no, y'all ain't from here, y'all ain't young um indigenous they do these things because they don't want us to know who we are they want us to forget they want us to forget not acknowledge not not remember it's crazy how not that long ago they was really pushing for the racial purity thing they was pushing the jim crow laws now they're saying oh yes let's get together let's 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 do all these things but yet still america is still uncomfortable they're like oh well if you don't like it you can just go back to africa where i'm gonna how i'm gonna go somewhere i've never been to explain that to me But yet, there's proof that you've been to Europe, though. So why not you go back to where you come from? Why not you go back to Europe and leave the rest of us alone? This is our homeland. And we have every right to be like, you know what? Nah. I ain't feeling this. I'm not liking how you are you are treating us I don't, I don't i'm not respecting you trying to remove us off our land and saying that we don't have any barriers here like how dare you they found our people all up and through the americas y'all but pushing that we come from and a, a, a slave ship. When just yesterday I told y'all that PPF.org says that only about 388,000 Africans came directly to North America. That is insane. I read an article today saying Africa is the epicenter of slavery yet again. What? I heard a lot about um, the uh, Africans with, with, with Sudan slaves, slavery. Yeah, they go. I think it was Sudan.
Yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible out here. It's horrible to know that you know where you belong, but in every direction, you have someone telling you something different. And that's exactly what's going on with the whole Back to Africa movement. They are trying to manipulate, to gaslight, and just straight up bully us out of our homeland. And it has worked on some of our people. Some of our people are like, all right, see, you're going to Africa. And then they coming back to my son. They over there calling us Takata. They calling me white. They, they looking at me weird. They looking at me funny. Yeah. They don't... Y'all, I mean, I'm pretty sure on the internet, I mean, the Africans that are being raised by the phones, like, as some of our people, there are Africans that see us as the same people, then you have Africans that just don't see us as the same people. And y'all forgetting that a large majority of, of the people on that continent see it that way. You know, they definitely don't see that all skin folk is skin folk, so why do you? Because they say Africa is the motherland. You know why they say Africa is the motherland. Because they want to take your land. They want to remove you off your land. That's why Walter Plecker, Cox, and Walter Plecker was working so hard to take our people off their own land. They did everything in their power to remove us off our own land. And when it didn't work, they have to come out with other theories. They have to come out with with other um, quote unquote scientific facts and scientific evidence that ain't nobody ever laid eyes on themselves. Okay, so they know what they are doing by promoting this this movement, this theory, this ideology to our people. They do not want us to know who we are. They do not want us to embrace who we are. And that's why um, yesterday, I did that live. What does the government get out of calling black people African? Everything. They get everything. They get everything. That's why they have pawns like Marcus Garvey to try and push us out of our own homeland. They're like, okay, we can't do it ourselves. Then we got to get one of our own to mislead them. And y'all, our people are not stupid. They are not dumb. We know when someone is trying to to deter us. Okay, so I know I probably hurt some people's feelings. I'm so sorry, but I had to say what I had to say because it is the truth. Like, I literally just went by source by source with y'all, breaking down each thing, and there's still with people that be like, uh uh. This is what happens when our people team up with the enemy and come back and try to shake hands with us and say, oh, well, I have a plan. You have a plan? Yeah, I have a plan. Let's all move to Africa. Why would we need to move to Africa when we from here? Oh, don't worry, you guys, we're gonna have a boat. I ain't, I ain't getting on no boat with you. Why do I need to get on the boat with you? Makes absolutely no sense.
these people are pushing these things because they feel like we have no footing in this world. Y'all think that they truly believe that we're African? No. They're pushing us to Africa to get what is ours. To take over what is ours. Because even the people that are in Africa, they still trying to, they still take it over what they have. They still, y'all, there are like African tribes adopting hell people in willingly, making them chiefs and chiefs this. You cannot make this up. Type in white African chiefs and look it up for yourself. Because you need to see that for yourself. They are there. And they are adopting it. Meanwhile, we're we're too busy calling out the ones that are actually stealing our heritage. Okay, Ashley, I, I see it. I, I got I got your link that you sent me. Africa is again the world world's epicenter of modern day slavery. Africa just recorded the highest rate of modern day slavery in the world. All conflict state sponsored forced labor and forced marriages were the main causes behind the estimated 9.2 million Africans who live in servitude without the choice to do so, according to 2018 Global Slavery Index. What? And despite these practices being widespread, slavery has remained a large and visible issue in part because it disproportionately affects the most marginalized members of society, such as minorities, women, and children. Okay. And then you gotta, gotta pay to see the rest, but okay. Oh, look, an African wrote it. Abdi Latif Dahir is reported with Quartz Africa. He speaks Mali, Arabic, and Swahili. Ah, okay. All right. He's talented. But I just, I just think that's crazy, y'all. I just think that's crazy. But then again, it's like, it's like, what about the slavery we've been through, too? You know, because they spent millions of our people overseas, you guys, to the Europe, to Africa, like, they shipped this out everywhere. There are even South Pacific Islanders with indigenous DNA. And they were so busy focusing and colonizing America. I find it a little hard to believe to say that Africa was the epicenter of slavery. Not saying, not not trying to reduce what's going on with them, because obviously it's a tragedy. But um, what about all the Indians that had to go account for? What about all the Indians that were captured in slavery and then reclassified as Black, Negro, colored, or even African? You know, what what about what about that? What about us? You know, so when they was colonized in America, they were trying to export us um out by any means. You know, so when people be like, Oh well, you know, slavery was so big in America, yeah, blah blah blah. Yeah, it was, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it was Afri- like all of them were Africans. Because even um, what did Be- Benjamin Franklin? He said, why send Africans over here and increase their numbers? We trying to get rid of them. So that lets me know that they were pushing us out by the numbers.
you know. So that, but that's, that's, it's, it's insane, y'all. It's insane. But this is what they do. This is what they do. They put these programmings on our people. And see, they got us with the television and with the cell phones and the computers and stuff because the internet is a mental matrix. You feel what I'm saying? So it's easy to get trapped into that phone. For hundreds of years, they've been coming with our people with this. And we've been like, no. But ever since social media came into play, ever since they've been pushing more and more African stuff, our people are slowly starting to take the bait. And I hate to see that, y'all, because I would hate for y'all to realize that you actually have indigenous DNA and indigenous uh, ancestry. And then when you try to go get your land back with your court documents, they're going to be using what you've been posting on Facebook against you. They're going to use your citizenship against you. Because we have already read about Walter Plecker and what's going on in Virginia. And, and, this, and just to put that out there, paper genocide did not only happen in Virginia. We only know what we know because they were so blatantly loud with it. And just because other vital statistics people in, in different states wasn't as loud with it doesn't mean that they wasn't practicing Walter Plecker um, practices either. Paper genocide did not start with Walter Plecker. He is the one that just put it at its peak. Okay, so this is what they do. This is what they do to our people. They got to come up with multiple ways to divide and conquer us. Lie to us and get rid of us. And if you are one of those people claiming that you're African without even really researching your genealogy, Please understand that there is an agenda to keep you that way. Y'all, anything I say on my channel, I know it may seem like, oh, well, she thinks she knows everything, blah, blah, blah. It's not that I know everything. It's because I've been through it myself. I used to be one of those people that claim to be African. I used to be one of those people that claim to be pro-black and all that other stuff. That's how I know. That's how I'm able to relate to what y'all guys are saying. You know, but however, I had to learn what is right for me and, and what is the truth. What is my truth and what is my family's truth? And I had to go from there. I don't look to the quote, quote, oppressor for the truth. We sit here and go online every day talking about how pale people lie, how pale people dece uh, deceive us, how pale people be doing this and that. So why would you think that I'm going to believe them when it comes to my own origins? What makes you think that I'm going to believe them when it comes to anything about me? Now, of course, you know, of course, it's going to be some trust there because I don't grow my, my food or, you know, or stuff like that right now, even though I can. So there's some type of level of trust. Like, do I trust them enough on my food? Yeah, ultimately, because I still eat out, okay? I'm trying to think of other ways do I trust them. But it's just, it's just I guess it's just a mutual trusting. Like, anything transactional, I'm trusting that they will do their job, do it right, and then let that be that. But however, when it comes to me, my mind, soul, body, no. Doctors, I'll listen. But hell, half the time they don't know them stuff, they get them. That's why they call it a practice. Seems like they still practice them. 
I remember when doctors used to just be like really good at what they well medicine has not always been a hundred percent. Not always. So we can't be like, oh well, you know, medicine never let us down, you know. Uh, doctors never let us down. I'm like, no. You know, actually too, I actually read this this quote the other day. They said that there are more there are people in the medical field that have killed more of our people than cops ever could have. And I was like, you know what? Ain't right. Medical professionals can get away with so many more murders when it comes to our people and stuff because they can do things that are undetected or may not seen as, um, you know, a whistleblower. So that's how they're able to get away with a lot more deaths. Because e- even so, we have heard about with Martin Luther King Jr. They said that he survived the balcony attack, the balcony gunshot. And when we went to the hospital, it was the, the doctors and the nurses that refused to work on him. So when it comes to what people have to say about my heritage, I'm like, I don't know. Because your ancestors could have been the ones that were looking to get rid of my ancestors. So we'll see. We'll see. She said, big facts, get on a boat to Africa for what? What I need to get on the boat to Africa for? What when my legacy and my land and my people are here? Because when you ask people why we should go to Africa, it's mainly because of racism. But just think of it. If racism was not in the picture, if racial bias and prejudice was not in the picture, would you still consider moving to Africa? Now, if it was like for business, I would understand like, okay, you want to buy up a whole bunch of properties, you know, do your real estate thing, you know, cool. You know, I got you. I understand, you know, get your money. You know, but at the same time, trying to use us going to Africa to escape racism, that's that's like saying, oh, well, I can have you ex- uh, uh, escape the cruelest thing. Here, jump into my magician hat and live in it. No. Because going through racism is the inevitable. You're going to be dealing with racism here and you're going to be dealing with racism over there. Because remember, a lot of African leaders are corrupt. And there are African countries still got to pay to European countries. So it's not all rainbows and butterflies like people be trying to make it seem. You know, I'm not saying that Indigenous Americans and Africans can't form an alliance. I'm not saying that. And honestly, I think if we were to form an alliance, it would be pretty big and it would be pretty cool. But I don't see how we can be forming alliances when it's under false pretenses. When it's under deceit and lies. You should move to Africa because you face racism. What? But if I move to Africa, then I'm going to be dealing with more bias and, and, and more bull by people who I don't <laughs> look entirely like either. We are seen as the katas over there. We are seen as white over there, bro. On paper, we don't, we are seen as white. And when they move over here, they're seen as white too. On paper, though. Yeah, you know, there's so many mind games and mind tricks that they play on our people. And our people fall for it each and every time. You know, so, like... 
one thing I can say about the internet is that it, it connects us and we're able to get more information. But however, it's easy to mind control and manipulate our people since our people are very wrapped up in social media and trends and stuff like that. And this back to Africa movement thing has been a trend that I feel like will always be lingering until they perfect it and get it to where they need it. Because they say they've been trying to do the back to Africa movement about three times now and failed. It will continue to fail. But I fear that our people are eating up the the advertisements like Ludacris and um, what's the other guy? The guy that played Do Black Dynamite. Um, who else out there pushing Africa? It's just it's just a whole bunch of celebrities pushing. Um, this back to Africa movement thing, and y'all know how our people are when it comes to celebrities. They idolize these celebrities. They idolize everything that they do. So if a celebrity is saying, "Oh yeah, move to Africa," guess what? Our people go move to Africa because a celebrity said so, or a celebrity is making it look cool. So this is why I always encourage people: like, please just do your research. Just research about your people first. Research who they were and where they was at, and then form an opinion from there you know because even if you do do your research and you still don't want to claim that you're indigenous even though you come across indigenous documents and stuff fine you you are entitled to do what you want to do you are grown whatever but however at least you saw the information for yourself and you was able to form an opinion Because I'm not going to sit here and tell y'all, oh, yeah, you know, think for yourself and not promote y'all guys to think for yourself when it comes to your lineage and your heritage, too. It's easy for people to say that you are from Africa. It's so easy. It doesn't require much, much thought because all people do, all people can do is just look at your skin color and be like, you're African. That having dark skin does not mean you're African. Having kinky, coolly hair doesn't mean you're African either. There are South Pacific Islanders that have kinky, coolly hair, and they're indigenous to um, those islands. You know, and um, ones that follow their tribal uh Stories will always like they're gonna tell you like oh yeah my people always been here or, or whatever because if you if you're gonna go for the ones that um that have been taught by the Europeans or have been talking to the Europeans a little too much they don't they can only be used to be their African self but that's just how it is y'all like. Like the whole out of Africa, back to Africa movement thing, it can affect not only our people, but a lot of brown indigenous people from all over the world. Because I know we think like, oh, you know, they just targeting us, but they target other melanated indigenous people too. So really think about why they are pushing these things on our people. Why they want us to move around so much. You know, because honestly, our people called it first. It was like, you know what? Y'all see our population rising. Y'all see us getting wealthy. You see us getting healthy. You see us doing the damn thing. You see us 
having our own businesses and see you you see us doing good and you want us gone you don't want us to be great you don't want to see us do great so you want it out of sight out of mind Out of sight, out of mind. Really think about these things. That's what they do. This is what they push. They push us to fight each other, to leave our home. They push us separating from each other, the melanated woman and melanated man. They absolutely hate seeing our people be great, do great. So it's it's no it's no secret. It's no it's no wonder why they're pushing us to leave our home. They came over here calling us Indians, calling us Negroes, calling us everything but our names. And saying we have to leave our home, own homeland. Why? Why do I need to leave my home? Saying we don't belong here when they know good and what we do. So I don't, I don't take, I don't take everything that people say to heart because they are always trying to keep us from what is ours. They know what they are doing. They know what they are doing when they get the 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 basketball players, the actors, the singers, the rappers going over there, um, talking about helping Africa, moving to Africa, getting African citizenship. There's a reason why they have these celebrities promote um, being African more than being indigenous. Y'all know, like, just imagine the influence celebrities have, okay, for one. Now think about the celebrities that are on their indigenous shit. I mean, because there are, there are celebrities out there that do talk about being indigenous, but I'm talking about them pushing their indigenous heritage as much as they push that black label or being African or whatever, that will cause such a huge spark in our people and eventually them seeing a lot of these celebrities talking about being indigenous, it's going to eventually make them research their own genealogy, which leads to what? Them learning about paper genocide, to them learning about us being indigenous, to even probably learning about their being indigenous themselves from their own lineage. 
So it's a trickle down effect. That's why they target the people that they do and they use the people they do to feed this back to Africa movement agenda. Okay, now, no lie, Africa is a beautiful place. You know, um, Africa is not all dirt and, and, and starvation like how um, they put it out in the movies or on, on the media or whatever, you know. So I'm not going to promote that type of negativity towards uh, a brown continent. You know, we just not going to do that. But however, um, I will acknowledge and recognize the influence we have had on Africans, their agriculture, and their way of life. There were Creoles moving to Africa, what, during the 1800s, 1900s? Farming in, in West Africa. So y'all, I know a lot of our people are hanging on to Africa. And honestly, I'm not gonna bash Africa. I'm not gonna, I mean, I'll just speak facts. I speak the truth, you know, truth is truth, whether you like it or not, you know, facts are facts and that's just what it is. Our people, because of the brainwashing, the conditioning, they may never detach from this illusion they have about this place in that it relates to them or pertains to them. Because a lot of people are going off on us being African because of our skin color and because of what we look like or because of the out of Africa theory. But when you think about it, if I got to claim African because we don't know if I'm African because I don't have documents or whatever, but I mean, if that's the case, I should just be claiming everybody. If I got a claim to be African, why should I not claim to be European, Asian, Saudi Arabian? I should just claim everybody since I don't know everything in my lineage. But yet people are going to push these ideologies on us because they don't want us to know who we are. They don't want us to go to the government and be like, hey, your people or uh, white and furious frauded my ancestors out their land. And we're going to need that back. So when we start showing them land patents, then they start getting upset. Then they start getting angry. They don't want us to even look for the document that belongs to us, you guys. That's why they push in this demon ancestry test on our people so hard. There's a reason why you can get citizenship just off of a DNA ancestry test, but not enrollment with an American Indian nation. I had someone the other day ask me, it was like, Oh, well, they said that um, I can use my DNA ancestry test. I don't know what American Indian nation you talking to, baby. But you cannot solely use no DNA ancestry test to enroll. Where are your documents? Them DNA ancestry tests are not going to tell you the names of your ancestors. They're not going to tell you what they have done, where they have been, the impact they made on uh, people's lives, their part in history. And those are the things that y'all really are looking for. But y'all thinking y'all going to get it out of a DNA search test and you're not. Because I'm going to tell you right now, even with genealogy and DNA history, you're not going to know all the answers of your ancestry. Why? Because there has been so much that has been written out of history, that has been taken out of history. And not only that, there has been so many people, so many tribes that have died off. That would extinct, that, that, that were murdered, that were killed, 
there are things that we would never know. So I'm just being realistic. I'm not one of those people. I'm, because one thing that people have to understand about me, this is why a lot of people don't like me too. And I don't really care, but it just shows more about them than it does me. But people don't like me because I say truthful things and I speak on the reality aspect of it. Okay. I had a lady hit me up and she was like, oh, well, I want you to find my indigenous documents. And I had to tell short, I said, hold on. I don't know you. I have yet to look at your ancestry sheet. You, 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 you telling me a little bit about your ancestry already. And then you're telling me that um, you paid people to do your genealogy, but yet they're saying that they can't find or guarantee that they found your indigenous history. That's what she told me at first until I broke it down. And I said, there are so many things that come to genealogy that you may not get the answers to. And I'm not going to sit here and take your money and be like, yeah, I could find uh, uh, indigenous documents for you, not knowing if I can or can't. And I can't, and I can't really determine if I can if I have not even looked at your um, ancestry tree yet. And then she says, "Oh well, I'm just gonna go with the company I had. They said that they could find the documents, so I'm gonna try with them." After she just told me that they couldn't. So y'all, I know that at times we want things to be what it is, or we just hoping to find and search for things. The you can you can't. You probably can't find the thing that you're looking for. But we must always prepare ourselves for reality. And I'm never going to take someone's money or take away their time knowing good and full blown well that it could go left quick. And that's why our people are having so many trust issues. Because they're going off on what they hear and not with what they are actually seeing. You may never come across a document saying that your ancestor was Indian, but it does not mean that your ancestral line is not of Indian. Because if you still are finding paper genocidal terms, it is still a strong possibility that you have indigenous ancestry, especially when you have the culture, the characteristics, the art, like you just you just have those things within your bloodline. You know, it could take years, it could take months, it could take decades to even find the document you're looking for. And DNA ancestry tests are no better. They only touch 0.01% of your DNA. And on top of that, you, we all have over a million ancestors. Do you think paper genealogy and DNA ancestry tests are going to be able to go that far back on your ancestry? No. These are man-made tools to record who, who we are, our footprint, and what we're doing at the moment. Because Beth believe with them DNA ancestry tests, they are collecting your DNA and sending them to police officers, sending them to who else knows where. So really think about these things, you know. They're trying to press like, oh yeah, we African, we all come from Africa. But please understand and remember that... Um, We we have we just have our own ancestry. We have our own ancestry. We have our own lineage. But we have our own stories, and it's up to us to research those things and look them up and actually see if these things that they're saying relates to us actually relate to us. So. I mean, you could go back to Africa.
for a cup if you want to, but I don't know how you're going to go back if you was never there in the first place. Okay? So we can't be following into the traps people lead us to. We have to be realistic, and we have to think clearly and thoroughly, or we're going to lose. Okay? And it's crazy how um, in that uh, PDF I read earlier, how our people were against Marcus Garvey teaching because they said it was not liberal, liberal um, environmentalism. Who are the main people always talking about the environment? Us, the Indians. We are always concerned about our homeland and about our environment and, and, and keeping it up to par. So that was a tell tell sign right there. Like anytime when we talk about the environment, that means we ain't leaving. That means we are aware of our homeland. We gotta make sure that our homeland is good and keep it out of bad hands. <laughs> All right. So that's all I have to say about this topic because um, I, I try I try to not talk about it as much because to me obviously it's just a scam. Obviously it's just a scam. The Back to Africa movement is a scam because everybody is pushing us to claim out Africa, but then we are Africans claiming to be us, claiming to be indigenous, claiming to be the, the the black American, then you have the white people claiming to be us, then you have the five dollar Indians claiming to be us. Like it just, it's all over the place. And all these people are pushing us to go over there. They're pushing us to take on our new identity. So that's, y'all, that's just a, a tell sign that says they are effing with our head and they want us out of what is ours. And I'm so happy that our ancestors did not play into their games. They were just like, nah, like, F that. You're a liar. You're lying. We know you're lying. You just want us gone because we're, we're doing good here in the South. You know, so. But yeah, that's, that's my take on the Back to Africa movement. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video. And until the next time, bye.